Officer Lopez Fitzgerald, at your service. I thought I knew you, Hank. What are you talking about? I never dreamed you had it in you to be so conscientious. <laughs> You're as bad as I am, looking for a hitman in the bushes. What? Well, I learned from the master. Come on, man, don't give me that. You're a natural. Well, thanks. I just know that you want me to look out for Sheridan. Yeah, man, but you don't have to go overboard. The FBI wouldn't be closing the case if they thought there was a threat, so... Just... Well, if you say so. Look, you know, thanks for coming to me this one last time, though. You know, I, I'm going to feel a lot better down in D.C. knowing that Sheridan's not by herself. Is that that agent's car phone? Yeah, he'll never hear it inside. I better get it. What the hell are you doing with that gun? I was prepared to shoot if we had been seen together. Surely you would know by now this is not a game. No, that's no reason to take out Luis. Don't tell me you're going soft on the man who stole away your girlfriend. Nobody's going soft on anybody, okay? When I kill Sheridan tonight, it's gonna break Luis's heart. I might as well be killing him, too. The game that you went to was <laughs> televised. Oh, yeah, sure, they're all televised. Oh, no. I thought you and Robert were going to the game yourselves. Yeah, so did I. Ethan, I wasn't spying on you, honest. I put the game on, hoping that they would show some of the fans so I could catch a glimpse of you. Good. You ended up seeing more than you bargained for. I saw you with Gwen. Oh, Teresa... I don't expect you to believe this, but I had no idea that Shannon and Anguin were going to be there. You know, Robert and I got to our seats, and there they were. They were sitting directly behind us. Ethan, when I saw you, Gwen was sitting right next to you. Right, well, uh, Shannon and Robert wanted to sit together, and that left the seat next to me open for her. I, and I didn't want to tell Gwen that I, I, I wouldn't sit with her. But I swear, I had nothing to do with the way things turned out. Do you believe me? It just, the Romy to see you and Gwen laughing at the game. Uh, that, I mean, that was just some old uh, basketball cheer that we used to yell in school. That's what I mean, Ethan. This, this is never going to work. What are you talking about? Look, you're getting this upset over some uh, stupid team cheer? It's... It's not just the cheer, Ethan. It's everything you and Gwen share. You've been together for so long. You have history I could never even hope to have with you. But, Teresa, we grew up together. We have the same friends. Our families are very close. That's what I mean, Ethan. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I can't compete with that. I just can't. What is this about, Chad? Look, it's personal, all right? Between me, Whitney, and Kay. You can tell me, Chad. Stay out of it. Well, sir. I'm not staying out of it. Now, you can't just march into my house, call my daughter a liar without explaining yourself. Okay, you want to hear about it? Yes, I do. Well, your daughter's been spreading some nasty, low-down rumor about me and some girl I don't even know. But my daughter wouldn't do that. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bennett, but she did, all right? She'd been talking some real trash to Whitney about me. And I want her to admit that she made it all up right now. So what did I ever do to you, Kay? I mean, why'd you have to go out of your way to make me look bad to Whitney? Kay, what does Chad care what Whitney thinks about him? I thought I was the one he liked. Now what exactly did Kay tell Whitney you did? Only about the sleaziest thing a guy could do? She said I, um, I knocked up some girl named Tiffany and then walked out on her. 
and that he didn't even help her after she lost the baby. Kay told me that Tiffany had to leave town because her name was completely destroyed. See, this is exactly what I was afraid of ever since Chad Harris walked into our lives. I want you out of our garage apartment tonight. I'll never be in the same league as Gwen. So why don't you just leave me right now and marry her like you're supposed to? Well, Teresa, no, hold on a minute. Look, I don't want you ever to say that again. I love you, remember? What am I supposed to do? You and Gwen have a, a million memories together. You, you like the same things. You, you enjoy the same sports. I take it you don't like basketball. Tonight was the first time I watched. Yeah, thanks to the sitting assignments, it'll probably be your last. I even asked Chad to come over to the house and watch with me and Whitney so that, that he could explain the game to me. Teresa, you don't have to learn about basketball just because I like it. But I want to, Ethan. I want to learn about everything that interests you. Only when I saw you with Gwen tonight at the game, I realized that even if I did, it wouldn't matter. That Gwen would always be there first. That she'd always beat me to the punch whenever it came to you. You shouldn't feel that way. Did Gwen tell you how she got the tickets to the game? Well, I asked her, and she, she claimed that they were a gift from Shannon's father, like, at the last minute. That seems kind of convenient. Right? Well, I thought so, too. And I, I mean, I even accused her of setting up the whole thing. But then I realized that if anyone had, it would have been her mother, Rebecca. Gwen would never be so manipulative. Thank you for thinking the worst of me, Dr. Russell. And here I was, fool enough to believe that you and I had made some progress over the last few months. I think we owe Chad the benefit of the doubt. For all we know right now, this is just a rumor. It's more like an out-and-out -out lie. Dr. Russell, what is it about me that you hate so much? I mean, just because I didn't grow up in some middle-class fairy tale, don't automatically make me some no-account lowlife. Listen to me, son. I don't appreciate you speaking to my wife in that manner. And she is very protective when it comes to our daughter. And I respect that. But I'm telling you this whole thing is a lie. Yes, and I'm telling you that if it turns out not to be, I don't want you to ever see either one of my daughters again. And I'm glad that Kay told Whitney this, this horror story about Tiffany. Now maybe you girls will listen. I don't believe any of this. Now I know Chad better than anyone in this room. And he would never do anything like that. 